Last week, the UK slipped into recession. But was it avoidable? Why are interest rates not coming down when households are facing one of the greatest squeezes on income for a generation? Although inflation is falling, it is still above the inflation target. But is it a mistake to prolong a recession when inflation is expected to fall anyway? The problem the Bank of England faces is that the economy is in a dire state. Average real GDP growth has barely managed 1% in the past 12 years. Take away population growth and average real GDP per capita has barely increased at all. When growth is so low, it doesn't take much to push the economy into recession. One key factor in the recession was a big drop in retail sales at the end of last year. It is a reflection of how households are stretched by high taxes, high interest rates, inflation and stagnant real wages. Now, the Bank of England point out that so far this particular recession is relatively mild. GDP only fell by 0.4% in the last six months. And that's small compared to, say, the big drop of 2 or 3% in 2009. Also, we have to admit it is a slightly strange recession when unemployment is very low. It is what you might call a technical recession, which means GDP is falling for six months, but it lacks the dramatic surge in unemployment that usually characterises a recession. However, on the other hand, you could argue that GDP stats are hiding the true pain felt by many ordinary households. According to which magazine, 10% of households missed paying an essential bill last month. Households have been squeezed by higher interest rates with a rise in borrowing and a fall in savings. 30% of households have savings of less than £1,000. Average household debt per person is around £35,000 or nearly 100% of average earnings. It means that many households are vulnerable to the high interest rates we're seeing. It goes on, Bloomberg report 3 million households are in debt to their energy suppliers. And despite prices forecast to come down in April, they're still going to be around 50% higher than before the crisis. The biggest problem is that real household income has been squeezed by the past two years of high inflation and low wage growth. Even in the next few months, real incomes are expected to decline or stagnate and households will face a real difficulty in catching up with the past few difficult years. And it will also be worse for low income households who face a continued benefit squeeze and withdrawal of cost of living measures. And just about households, UK industry has low levels of investment and industrial production is still below pre-COVID levels. Last summer, I made a video criticising the Bank of England's decision to increase interest rates to over 5%. There were three main reasons for this. Firstly, interest rates have significant time lags. So the past increases, which started in 2022, are still not fully felt by the economy. In 2024, millions of homeowners are still remortgaging to higher mortgage rates. Therefore, there's going to be a continued squeeze on living standards whatever happens to rates. Monetary policy is a bit like a slow moving ship. Once you depress the economy, it takes a long time should you want to reverse course. It might sound confusing, but even if a bank were to actually cut interest rates, the average homeowner would still face higher mortgage rates this year. The second complaint is that higher interest rates are only having a relatively limited impact in reducing inflation. This is because inflation was primarily caused by cost push factors, higher energy, higher food prices and second round effects on wages. But with energy prices coming down, this aspect of inflation will fall without needing to depress the economy. UK workers really have quite limited bargaining power. And as inflation falls, you can see that nominal wage growth has already fallen quite significantly. But if we look at the causes of inflation in the UK, an overheating economy barely registers because with the economy in recession, there's no classic demand pull inflation. So with this unusual situation, changing interest rates has made relatively little impact to either inflation going up or inflation coming down. I wouldn't say no impact. If you raise interest rates high enough, 
you will eventually squeeze the economy to squeeze inflation out. But the question is, is it worth the effort? Is it desirable to put so much pressure on reducing household incomes to squeeze the last bit of inflation out of the economy? Andy Haldane does argue that the Bank of England risks crushing the economy with high interest rates. Now, related to this point is that higher interest rates are probably less effective than they used to be. Higher interest rates hurt homeowners, businesses with large loans and consumers with large debt. It is this group of the economy which is facing falling real incomes and lower growth. But the irony is that for the first time in history, higher interest rates actually increased net incomes. This is because higher interest rates help savers that get more dividends, more interest payments. And so far, this has outweighed the negative effect of higher borrowing costs. So how can you expect higher rates to reduce demand in the economy when net income actually increased? Now, this is an unusual situation related to the fact that many people nowadays have fixed rate mortgages and they will face high rates in the coming months. But it does explain why high interest rates had a limited effect in reducing demand. But the bigger problem is that higher interest rates have a very uneven effect. To purge inflation from a system requires a lot of pain for one section of the economy, but others are actually benefiting from it. And that's why average GDP stats can be misleading. Some people are actually getting better off, but some people are really facing a very uh, difficult squeeze. Ironically, one solution to this difficulty of monetary policy would be to use fiscal policy, increasing tax to uh, moderate demand and inflation, but for obvious reasons, politically almost impossible. Now, in the 2010s, many savers reasonably complained that real interest rates were negative. Inflation was higher than base rates by quite a lot. But now we've seen a sharp reversal with base rates higher than inflation for the first time in years. Now, the Bank of England's most recent inflation forecast is for it to fall to 2% later in the year. And if inflation falls to 2%, we could have the highest real interest rates for decades. The truth is that even if the Bank of England cut interest rates tomorrow, inflation will continue to fall anyway. So it raises a question, why would you want to have the highest level of real interest rates for more than a decade when the economy is in recession, the high street is struggling, real wages are falling and households struggling to pay bills? Now, if we wanted to defend the Bank of England's stance on interest rates in the economy, we could and we should look to the continued problem of inflation. Now, headline inflation has come down to around 4%, but underlying core and service sector inflation is still higher. And that shows there's still some underlying inflationary pressure there. Workers are trying to catch up for their lost real wages by bargaining for higher nominal wages. There's a stickiness also to UK inflation, which has often been slightly higher than other European and the US economy. Also, whilst gas prices are falling, and they've fallen quite a lot since their 2022 peak, there are still some cost push pressures in the economy. You know, for example, oil and shipping costs have risen a little bit because of the uncertainty and turmoil in the Middle East. And that could always get uh, worse in the coming months. The Bank of England have an inflation target of 2%. So they're reluctant to cut interest rates when inflation is still above the target. Also, the Bank of England claim that there are tentative signs of economic recovery already. They say we might be out of recession already. Consumer confidence has recovered from the depths of early 2023, although it's still minus 21. Retail sales rebounded in January, although the overall trend is still quite weak. So there are some signs of uh, recovery, but I think we'd agree that the green shoots of recovery still look very fragile at best. Now, the Bank of England were hurt by arguably being behind the inflation curve in 2022. The scale of quantitative easing in COVID was a mistake. They kept interest rates too low for too long. Recently, I made a video about the Liz Truss budget of September 2022, and it was actually quite interesting to see that just before the budget, inflation was 10%, interest rates were 2%. It's no wonder interest rates shot up so quickly when the market reacted badly to their budget. But anyway, the point is that the bank were criticised for allowing inflation to rise. But now, quite possibly, they're doing the alternative, they're overcompensating trying to stress reducing inflation, regain their inflation credibility. But it is worth bearing in mind, the Bank of England's remit is not just inflation. They have to meet the inflation target in a way that sustains growth and employment. 
and this is an important factor often forgotten. Also, worth pointing out briefly, the 2% target was created rather arbitrarily and adopted without any research about whether this is the best inflation target to have. I think it stemmed from a decision by the New Zealand Central Bank, but even they admit there's no particular logic to it apart from it sounded uh, about right. Now, I would still stand by my arguments I made last summer that the bank overdid rate increases and it's causing unnecessary economic hardship with very little return in the form of substantially lower inflation than we would get otherwise. But the unwelcome truth is that monetary policy is a very imperfect instrument. It's not a simple matter of raising interest rates and you get X amount reduction in inflation. The inflation we've had recently has not come from a booming economy. So trying to slow down the economy has pushed us into recession and made relatively little difference to the inflation rate, which is primarily uh, driven by global factors. Having said all that, I don't particularly envy the Bank of England's job. They have a difficult trade-off. And the truth is that the problems of the UK economy are much deeper than monetary policy. There's no monetary policy which can solve the UK's problems of low productivity, low investment, low long-term growth. It's not like the economy will suddenly start to do very well, even if we cut interest rates to 4%. But I think at this stage, it's better to err on the side of uh, promoting growth and avoiding a rise in unemployment than worrying too much about inflation. So many problems cannot be solved by monetary policy. And in fact, the past decade of quantitative easing did more harm than good. And this video explains why quantitative easing uh, increased inequality and contributed to the inflation of 2022. So do check it out and consider subscribing to the channel if you like these uh, videos. Thanks a lot. Bye.